Once, long, long ago, in a small village, there lived a man and his wife. They had a small cottage in a small garden and a small amount of money to live on. However, they had just about everything in the world they could ask for, except one thing. Dear husband, don't you wish we could have a child whom we could love? And the husband replied, well, yes, if you do. The husband and wife always agreed on everything. Now behind their cottage was a beautiful garden, overflowing with beautiful flowers and fresh vegetables. Unfortunately, the garden was surrounded by a very high wall, which no one dared to climb, because the garden belonged to a bad-tempered witch. This witch took great pride in her garden. She spent a lot of time tending the young plants and growing seeds. But apart from being a keen gardener, she was also very vain. That is, she was very concerned about how she looked. She drank plenty of carrot juice for the vitamins it contained. She put apricot peel on her cheeks to keep her skin soft. And she placed slices of cucumber over her eyes to keep them young looking. She really was very vain indeed. Every day the wife looked out of her window into the witch's garden and stared longingly at the wonderful salad and vegetables that grew there. Oh, how delicious that salad looks, thought the wife to herself. I wonder if I will ever be able to eat some. Now, at mealtimes, her husband would eat chicken, mashed potatoes, roast beef, butter, eggs, bread and jam, while his wife ate nothing at all. She was thinking of all the lovely, crunchy, fresh, green, tempting salad in the witch's garden. Eventually, her husband noticed how thin and pale his wife had become. You look thin and pale, he said. What's the matter? I didn't want to bother you, but if I cannot eat some of that fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad in the witch's garden, I believe I will surely die. The husband thought about this and became very worried. Oh dear, he murmured. My wife really is not at all well. What will happen to her if I don't get her some lovely, fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad to eat? After several days, as he tucked into his great big breakfasts, lunches and dinners, the husband noticed that his wife was even thinner. I know what I must do. I will climb into the witch's garden and bring you some salad, said the husband. The husband and wife always agreed on everything. And so it was agreed that the husband should climb over the wall at twilight and fetch for his wife some of the fresh green salad his wife so desperately needed. Once inside the garden, the husband quickly gathered as much of the fresh green crispy crunchy salad and vegetables as he could carry and scrambled back over the wall. The wife couldn't wait to eat the salad 
It was even fresher, greener, crispier and crunchier than she had expected. And so she ate and ate until it was all gone. Dear husband, said the wife, I believe I need more of this fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad, don't you? Of course the husband had to agree, because they agreed on everything. So, the next evening, he climbed over the high wall surrounding the witch's garden again. And he began to gather some of the salad and vegetables that grew there. But immediately, he heard from behind him a terrible scream. It was the horrible witch who owned the garden. <gasps> How dare you come into my garden and steal my salad, screamed the witch. The poor husband shook with terror. I, uh, it, it's for my d dear sweet wife, he whimpered. If she doesn't have some more of your fresh, uh, g -g -g green, c crispy, c crunchy salad, she will wither away. <laughs> I don't particularly like you, you horrid little man, said the witch. But if what you say is true, I will let you take as much salad as you like, provided you promise me one thing. When your wife has a child, you must give it to me. I will treat it well and look after it just like a mother. Uh, that is my condition. Either that, or I cast a terrible spell on you, you revolting little creature, and turn you into a miserable worm. Not that you would notice the difference. <laughs> and as for your skinny wife, I will cast a spell on her and turn her into an elephant. And then she will need 20 times as much salad and vegetables as she does now. So, you nasty little flea, said the witch in a rather unpleasant tone. What do you say? Mm -hmm. The poor man was so frightened he agreed to the witch's demand, gathered an armful of salad and ran back to his wife. And she ate as much as she could. And when she had finished, she said, Oh, that was lovely. I feel so much better. Uh, do you think, dear husband, I could have some more? And the husband, remembering his bargain with the witch, said, Yes, of course you can, dear wife. Besides, they always agreed on everything. Now, some time later, Husband and wife had their first baby, a beautiful baby girl. But that very same day, the witch appeared. Remember our deal, darling? snarled the witch. Fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad for this beautiful baby girl. <gasps> and so the witch left, taking the child with her. The witch named the child Rapunzel, and she soon grew to become a beautiful girl with long blonde hair. The witch, being very vain, did not like the competition and despite her beauty treatments, she was sure that Rapunzel was now even more beautiful. So the witch took the young girl to a tall tower, deep in the forest, in order to hide her away from the rest of the world. The tower had no doors and no staircase, 
there was only one small window way up at the very top. When I bring you your meals, screamed the witch, let down that pretty blonde hair of yours and I will climb up to the window. And she left. Rapunzel was all alone in the tower, with nothing to do, nothing except sew a silly old tapestry that the witch had given her. She also grew very hungry and looked forward to her meal times. So, whenever Rapunzel heard the voice of the witch crying, Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your hair. She would go to the tiny window and throw her long plait down to the ground. Using the plait of hair as a rope, which climbed up to Rapunzel's window. And when the witch had given the girl a little meal, she slid down the plait of her hair again and returned to her castle. Rapunzel would sadly pull up her hair and return to her sewing. And as she sewed, she sang to herself for company. One day, a prince was riding through the forest. He heard Rapunzel singing, and he stopped at the base of the tower. Where in the world is that amazing voice coming from? He said to himself. But seeing no one among the trees, he shrugged his shoulders and said, Oh well, and rode on. But the prince was so fascinated by the beautiful singing, he returned the next day and hid behind a tree so that he could hear the sweet sound of Rapunzel's voice. From here he could see the tower and Rapunzel's tiny window. Suddenly, the witch appeared and shouted, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And Rapunzel came to the window and threw her long blonde plait down to the ground. <gasps> the prince watched as the witch climbed up to the top of the tower. After the witch had gone, the prince emerged from behind his tree and stood beneath Rapunzel's window and shouted, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The girl came to the window and threw her long blonde plait down to the ground. And the prince climbed up to Rapunzel's window and went into her room. Hello, said Rapunzel, rather shocked. Who are you? I was passing and heard your singing, said the prince. And I just had to meet the person who had such a wonderful voice. I hope you don't mind my coming up here. Not at all, replied Rapunzel, who was very pleased to have a visitor. You're very welcome, I'm sure. That's good, <laughs> said the prince, who was still rather puffed out after his long climb. I hope you don't mind my asking, but this is a very weird place to live. Rapunzel explained how the witch had imprisoned her in the tower and that she had no way to escape 
because she obviously couldn't climb down her own hair. The prince felt very sorry for her indeed. So he promised to return the following night, bringing a rope ladder with which to rescue her. The prince returned home feeling very much in love with the young girl. The next day, the witch came to the bottom of the tower as usual. Rapunzel! Rapunzel! she shouted. Let down your hair! And Rapunzel came to the tiny window and let down her long blonde plait. And the witch climbed up to the top of the tower. Rapunzel was surprised to see her, because she was still thinking about her prince. Oh, she said, you're much lighter than him. Y oh, I mean... What did you say? screamed the witch. You've had someone up here. In her rage, the witch took a pair of scissors and cut off poor Rapunzel's plait of hair. The witch hung the plait by the window and took Rapunzel down from the tower and dragged her through the forest. Soon she returned and climbed back up into the tower and waited for the prince. That evening the prince came to the tower as he had promised and shouted up to her, Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your hair! And the witch dropped down the plait of hair. She watched as the prince began to climb. <gasps> he was halfway up. The witch unhooked the plait of hair. And the prince fell to the ground, tearing his trousers and banging his knee quite badly. The witch roared with laughter until she suddenly realized that now she had no way of getting down from the tower. She sobbed and sobbed, but of course no one could hear her. The prince limped through the forest. Suddenly he saw on the ground in front of him a trail of Rapunzel's golden hairs. He followed the hare. he came to the edge of a lake. He could hear Rapunzel's beautiful singing coming from an island in the middle of the lake. The prince rode out to the island in the witch's boat. rushed up the beach and found poor Rapunzel. <laughs> they rode together through the forest until they came to the prince's palace. He took her home to meet his parents. And sometime later, they married. As for the witch, she tried to entice someone to rescue her from the tower. Anybody there? Here I am. Come and get me, she cried. <laughs> Thank you.
The husband, seeing the witch's garden become overgrown, climbed over the wall and looked after it. planted new young plants. And so he was able to grow lots of fresh, green, crispy, crunchy salad for his wife. they were invited to Rapunzel's wedding, the wife feeling much better and stronger from all the fresh food her husband grew for her, looked forward to going. But she said to her husband, wouldn't it be a good idea if you stayed behind and looked after the garden? Well, I suppose so, said the husband. After all, they always agreed on everything. Mm -hmm. 